Welcome everyone, Costine here with my Holy Paladin gearing guide for World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic for Tier 4 and Tier 5. What's the kind of gear you should have had by the time Tier 4 ended, and what's the kind of gear you should aim for in Tier 5 now that it's coming out. One thing to mention here is with regards to professions, in that I have deliberately not included profession gear uh, gearing in this guide. Why is that? Well, because Holy Paladins have a great deal of flexibility with professions. You can go tailoring, you can go alchemy, you can go leatherworking, hell, even engineering, especially with the tier 5 helmet, or rather with uh, the phase 2 engineering helmet, assuming it's actually going to be in there, as we assume it is, um, the engineering can be useful. So there's flexibility. I'd say leatherworking is probably going to be a go is probably a go-to for a lot of Holy Paladins. But there is a great deal of value in tailoring as well with, say, Primal Mooncloth. But I will talk about these items, but for these actual lists, I've avoided including those those kind of items. And by the way, this is one of the reasons why people should actually watch the videos instead of, oh, can you give me a gearing list? Well, I can give you a gearing list, but the reason the reason I pick certain choices versus others is, is something that I spell out in these videos. So strongly recommend you watch it instead of just going by the list. So anyway, Helmet for Tier 4, just a card Diadem, 35 healing, Helm Enchant, 18 healing, uh, Gemming. It seems like Gemming for pure healing is the go-to for Holy Paladins, both Tier 4 and Tier 5, based on what I've seen. But there is going to come a point uh, where you're probably going to want to go with Intellect. I think that's with Tier 6, maybe Sunwell, maybe even as far uh, down as Sunwell Plateau. But there is going to come a point where Holy Paladins will... Uh, cha change their gemming around. Not now, however. Now, gemming for healing is the go-to. So, 18 healing. I hope you have a good bank account if you're interested in gearing a Holy Paladin because you will absolutely need it for the gems alone. Um, so, 18 healing, uh, red gems, as well as the 26 healing meta gem for the tier 4 helmet. And you also want the two set of tier 4 and you want to be the one judging bless uh, Judgment of Light for the extra healing on it. Neck. Well, with the necklace, uh, you do have a Doom Marker choice that is better, just extra healing intellect. But world bosses are some things that maybe one or two guilds on a server control. So if you're not in one of those guilds, you're kind of kind of screwed. You can also go with the Teeth of Gruel, or you could have gotten the Seasonal Slave Pen's Neck, or the Nec Necklace of Eternal Hope from Badges of Justice. But Ember Spur Talisman from Nightbane is a pretty solid choice if you don't have access to Doom Walker. Uh, shoulders, Justicar Pauldrons. There is a strong argument to be made, and one that I will make for going with Primal Mooncloth if you are a tailor. The free set is powerful. The items themselves are really powerful in terms of the healing they provide. Yeah, they don't have gems, but they're still really powerful items in their own right, and more than make up for it. Uh, but but outside that, you can go with uh, tier four, pretty strong, and you want to get the two set. The two set is also pretty much worth it as well. So don't ignore that particular aspect. Uh, you can also get the pauldrons of justice seeker, but they're not as good as nor near as good as the tier four uh, shoulders. Uh, cloak stainless cloak of pure hatred from Prince uh, Malkazar. Outside of that, like you do have the opera cloak, you do have a oh, World, a uh, world, world drop cloak. You don't have a bunch of choices, but the one, and honestly, the life giving cloak, the one that drops from from that's a world drop, is probably the actual best choice. But realistically, how many people are going to get that? I say stainless cloak of the pure heart that is probably the most realistic one. But yeah, if you can get, if you can get the life giving cloak, yeah, you lose some stamina, you lose some intellect, but it, and you lose a bit of MP5, but it is more healing is 11 more healing and that's more than more than worth it. 2% reduced threat on cloak. Threat is a bigger deal uh, for healers than you might believe, especially as a holy paladin because there are some fights where quite a few fights where you're going to take damage, where you can take damage as a healer and you might want to use righteous fury. Improve righteous fury. So you're going to do a lot more healing threat wise. Uh, not all that often, but it is also something to consider. So having this kind of threat, uh, threat reduction chance, what do you have the uh, when you have the option, when you don't have any better option, is worth it. Uh, chess piece, just car uh, chess piece, um, is the best choice outside of Primal Mooncloth. Dice Primal Mooncloth chest is just flat out better. Yeah, no stamina, that is an issue. One shouldn't ignore less intellect, but a heck of a lot more healing. Even when you're like 
even when you're accounting for the one one gem less, it's still more healing, um, more MP5, but you don't have spell crit. I would say Prime Moonclaff, Moon though, is the better choice, especially when you're accounting for the set bonus. Um, bracers, you can get the crafted leatherworking ones if you have leatherworking. They are uh, they are really good, uh, but Blessed Bracers also are pretty solid. Blacksmithing BOE ones, and they are the best choice available in tier 4. Uh, weapon, Light's Justice, best in slot for every single healer. Yeah, it doesn't have MP5. Yes, it has spirit, but the amount of healing that it has compared to, say, Shard of the Virtuous, that's not the discussion. Uh, Light's Justice is the best in slot weapon for every healer from tier 4. Uh, Offhand, you want to go with the shield, and the reason you want to go with the shield is because of the intellect enchant. That's going to make shields better than, uh, say, Aran soothing Sapphire on that alone. But it also has really good stats, drops from Macferdin, Aegis of the Vindicator, 50 free healing, and 11 MP5, 21 intellect. Uh, gloves, Gauntlets of Renewed Hope, they drop from Atom and the Huntsman. You can also get the Maiden of Virtue ones. Not quite as good, and they are male, so shamans will want them. Uh, Gauntlets of Renewed Hope are really the best choice for you as a paladin. Though, one less MP5, so maybe not, but more intellect. So, yeah, Gauntlets of Renewed Hope, 35 uh, healing on the gloves. Um, Belt, Girdle of Truth. Here you do have crafted options. Pramunkov uh, is probably, is by far and away the best here. Like Intellect, MP5, Healing, Gems. Yeah, it's not even a discussion. You can also go with Leatherworking options with the, uh, with the Windhawk Belt, uh, for instance, or, uh, or, there, or even Nether Strike one. But yeah, just go for it, Girdle of Truth if you don't have... A profession choice or Prime Wolkoff if you do have a profession choice. Uh, pants, um, the plate ones are the leg plates of the innocent, but the best choice are the heart flame leggings. A lot more healing, same amount of gems. You don't have spell crit and you don't have MP5, but the sheer healing benefit you get from heart flame makes them best in slot by far and away. Uh, but if you are competing against shamans, yeah, you can use the leg plates of the innocent for a while at least. Uh, Boots, if you have access to Doomwalker, to Kazakh, uh, you, you, and you can win these, Gold Leaf uh, Wild Boots are pretty good. Aside that, though, Forest Lord uh, Striders from uh, the chess event in Karazhan. So you have two really good items from the chess event, the legs and the boots. Uh, rings, plenty of choices in terms of rings, like a Kazakh ring, Mag uh, Quest ring with the Naru Light uh, Warden's Band, Jade Ring of the Ever Living. You can even use Ancestral Band from Fralmar Revered, Plane of Choices, or the Violet Signet. Uh, various choices, like one of the best options, one of the best things you can do if you don't have good raiding rings is just go for these kind of Ancestral Bands. They're really, really solid to go for. Uh, Plane of Ring Choices. Trinkets! Uh, trinkets, you should have an arsenal of trinkets because it depends on the situation, what you're going to go for. Rejuvenation Gem, really powerful according to a lot of people. Uh, Essence of the Martyr, probably the best one you can get from actual TBC content in Tier 4, from uh, 441 Badges of Justice. Uh, you can also get the Ribbon of Sacrifice. You can also use Prayer Books if you so desire. Various choices available, or Scarab Infinite Cycle. It really depends on the situation. What do you need and what kind of situation? So I would say having Essence of the Marth and having Ribbon of Sacrifice, having Prayer Books, having Scarab Infinite Cycle, it's all worth it. But the best in slot trinket for tier 4 and for pretty much the entire game and all of Wrath of the Lich King is Scarab Brooch, which drops from on Kiraj, AQ40. Yeah, an AQ trinket is best in slot not just for tbc but not just for all of burning crusade as a holy paladin but for all of wrath the lich king this trinket is insanely powerful hell it might have been the best in slot trinket for all of cataclysm as well believe it or not had they not nerfed it i believe with cataclysm so your magical heals provide the target with a shield that absorbs damage equal to 15% of the amount healed for 30 seconds that is incredible this will save tanks and then Lipram. 
the ray drop is liberum of souls redeem you can use that in situations where you can use blessing of light on tanks if you can't use a blessing of light you should use liberum the light bringer some paladins would go for blessed book on the ground it's a decent enough starting choice like it's a quest drop you can get to get but liberum the light bringer is the choice you want to go for uh, the way you want to heal as a holy paladin is you want to spam holy lights. Fuck flash of light healing. Your flash of light will not keep tanks up. You want to spam holy light. You want to do a lower rank holy light so you get the faster cast speed and then just keep pumping holy lights. Cancel cast. If the tank takes damage uh, that uh, other healers aren't going to be able to heal, you let the heal go through. If other healers get the tank uh, fully up by the, by the time your cast would be over, you just cancel cast it. Or if the tank doesn't take tam damage, you cancel cast it. That's how you heal as a holy paladin. Fuck flash of light. You heal with holy light. That's the way to do it. You use multiple ranks of holy light, and that's how you play the, the game as a holy paladin. And that's where Librum of the Lightbringer comes in. So that's tier four. Uh, when we look at all the stats, I'm just going to go with spell. Uh, it's... 2k healing, uh, 16, 17% spell crit, uh, and 96 MP5. Not great MP5, but that's not really what's important here. The healing is what's important. Anyway, for holy uh, in tier 5, moving on there, we have uh, quite a few changes, but also some things that do stay the same. There are si some significant upgrades in tier 5 and some that are not so very significant. And I'll talk about which items you should get as a priority in tier 5 um, at the end of this video. But helmet-wise, uh, tier 5, it's a no-brainer. You could say, oh, but engineering, yeah, engineering has MP5, tier five, the tier 5 one, yeah, it has free less healing, doesn't have MP... Uh, actually, it does have MP5, what the fuck am I talking about? So... It's like, it's genuinely a no-brainer. Tier 5 is a lot better than anything else uh, available. The Tier 5 helmet. It's one of the biggest upgrades you can get. And you might want to get the gem bonus there. Uh, neck. You can continue using the Ember Spur Talisman. You can keep going for the Doomwalker uh, neck. Or you can get uh, the Kael'thas and the Verdant Sphere one. Though keep in mind, the neck from Kael'thas and Verdant Sphere is best in slot for some people for the rest of the game. It's not best in slot for you, I believe, as a Holy Paladin. And there is a neck upgrade in tier 6 that you'll get. So just bear in mind, there's going to be a lot of competition. And the people that want it the most, the people that should get it, are the ones that are actually going to use it for the rest of the game. Not people that are going to throw it away the moment tier 6 comes out. Just bear in mind. Depends on how long tier 5 is going to be. Uh, shoulders, Crystal Forge, Pauldrons. Uh, the set bonus at tier 5 doesn't really matter, so you can use uh, the Coral Barbed uh, Shoulder Pads. They have the same healing, MP5 versus Spell Crit. So I would say the tier shoulders are better, but the Coral Barbed uh, Shoulder Pads are probably a reasonable enough choice. And I mention this because plenty of people will want the tier shoulders uh, probably far more than you will. Like, for you, it's just different stats. But also, shamans probably will want the coral barb to shoulder pads themselves. So it's a discussion how much they want it, how much you want it, those kind of things. Uh, you do have, uh, you also do have pauldrons of the Argent Sentinel, but honestly, don't, don't even bother looking at these. Use tier 4. Like, the only upgrades you're looking at are coral barbed or crystal forts. Cloak. Um, compared to tier 4, you can get the Sun Shower Light Cloak from Kael'thas. Though, I'll be blunt about it, as a Ray Leader, as a Loot Council member, I would not give this to a Paladin. I would give this to a Priest. I would give this to a Druid over a Paladin or a Shaman. Because Spirit is not a great stat. Yes, it has more healing, quite a bit more healing, and, but it's not uh, so significant. So anyway, uh, that's a uh, cloak choice. But yeah, if you can get the Sun Shower uh, Light Cloak, go for it. Uh, chess Piece, Crystal for Chess Piece, best in slot. You can still use Primal Moonclaff, still really good. But yeah, at this point, Crystal Forge, the tier piece does win out by quite a bit. The spell crit is really significant on tier five, on the tier five chess piece, and it makes a best in slot. Um, Bracers, Black Fathom uh, Warbands from uh, Hydra Stun Staple. Say hello to the Shaman Holy Paladin War because Shamans and Holy Paladins are going to be fighting for a lot of the same damn loot. I mean, you already do so in Tier 4. It gets worse in Tier 5. And hell, it gets worse in Tier 6 even. But yeah, the Hydra's uh, Bracers are best in slot. 62 healing. Uh, like, comp compare this to, say, the Blessed Bracers. It's a gem socket. It's more healing. You do lose the, do lose the spell crit, so there is a loss there. But damn it. Like, the gem socket alone makes these an upgrade. Um, 
weapon, Light Phantom uh, spec uh, Scepter, best in slot healing weapon for every healer. But I probably give a uh, priority here to shamans and paladins, but that's a discussion for guilds to have. It's like, who gets it? How many shamans and how many shamans do we give this weapon to? And do we give it to a holy paladin? Do we, how many shamans do we give it to before we take in consideration the priests or the rest of druid? Uh, Offhand state is the same, Macfarid and Shield. Keep doing Macfarid if you don't have the shield. It is pretty damn significant. You'll be using it for quite a bit. Um, gloves, Glorious Gauntlets of Crestfall. 81 healing, 28 spell crit. None of the other options come close. I mean, I guess you could use the World Storm Gauntlets. Uh, never mind the fact that every Resto Shaman worth a damn is going to want these gloves, but. That's a different discussion, but yeah. You can also use the tier gloves if you so desire. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it compared to Gauntlets of Renewed Hope. But yeah, if you don't have any other be better options, but yeah, just pray that these drop. If Hey, if you get lucky and Shalai Shamgans get the World Storm Gauntlets, uh, go for those if you're unlucky on uh, these. But do get a few Vash kills in before you push for that. Like, wait to see, because no one else can use these, and they are best in slot. Don't take the World Storm Gauntlets from Resto Shamans, who actually, for whom it's actually their own best in slot. Uh, belt Girdle of the Fallen Stars from Soler uh, from, uh, not Solari, from uh, TK uh, Trash Drop. You can use Primal Coffee if you have it, or you can get um, a belt from Solarian. Just... Not really great choices with belts, I'll be quite honest. And this is a male belt, so shamans will want it as well. You're competing with them. Pants, Sunhawk, Leggings from Kael'thas. A lot of healing. MP5, Intellect, Stamina. Really good leggings. Like, compare these with Higher Flame. I mean, it is just a bit of a healing upgrade, but really the MP5 is a fairly significant uh, uh, deal here compared to Higher Flame. It's really MP5 that makes these better than Heart Flame. Uh, not necessarily the healing itself, though. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna sneeze at 18 healing. That's a gem right there. Boots. Uh, boots of courage on ending are is the realistic choice for a lot of holy paladins. I mean, there's a lot of uh, items here that where you have competition with shamans. The realistic best in the the actual best in slot is orca hide boots. They do have less healing, but they do have gems. So you end up in a better position. Do less spell crit, so it's a trade off. There, though, I'd say the healing is better. Here's the thing, though. Resto Druid. A Resto Druid will want these boots from Leo. Uh, Resto Shamans should get these boots. If you see a Resto Shaman saying, oh, I don't need these boots, they're not that big of a deal, it's like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. These boots are best in slot for Shamans and for Resto Druids and for you. Right? They are best in slot for all of you, and all of you should get them if you can. You shouldn't necessarily prioritize them when Boots of the Courage on Ending are pretty solid in their own right, so don't necessarily be greedy on this. This is why I put Boots of Courage on Ending over Orca Hide Boots on, on this list. Because realistically, I'd say you probably aren't the biggest priority for these, honestly. I'd say Shamans should get priority for these, considering you have a pretty solid choice in your own right. Uh, rings, you can stay the same, or and you can also get the Phoenix Ring of Rebirth from Alar, really good ring, MP5, he, uh, 55 healing, 24 intellect. Uh, trinkets stay the same, no real uh, choices available there, with the exception of the, their brew hops because of the seasonal event. And then Libram, Libram of Absolute Truth from Lurker Below, reduces the mana cost of Holy Light by 34. This is enormous because you are going to want to spam Holy Lights. And reducing the mana cost of that will just help you a great deal in maintaining and in, in keeping you going as a Holy Paladin. Mana is a big deal for Holy Paladins. In fact, there are quite a few fights where you, if you have to pump healing, you may want to deliberately take damage just so you get healed by someone else. By the way, you should always get healed by someone else as a Holy Paladin in a raid just so you get mana back through Spiritual Attunement. But Liberum of Absolute Truth isn't just best in slot for tier 5, it's best in slot for the rest of the game. Now, with that said, what are the top 5 items I would prioritize as a Holy Paladin? Well, the, one, the most important item in tier 5 is the Liberum of Absolute Truth from Lurker Below. And I cannot stress this enough how big of a deal this is. Now, it's not an item you're going to have a competition for, so it's not actually a top 5 item because, yeah, if this drops, a Holy Paladin gets it plain and simple. But a lot of people underestimate just how enormous this is. 34 mana reduction in Holy Light is a pretty big deal. 
there are quite a few Holy Paladins I've seen, oh, Disenchanted. Over the years, I've seen that they're like, Disenchanted, I don't need it, throw it away. And it's like, oh, we then go back to SSC months later because they realize they don't have anything better. So yeah, take this. Don't throw it away. Fucking use it. Play Holy Paladin, uh, Holy Paladin properly, which is spamming Holy Light, cancel casting. Uh, if the, you don't, if your tank actually doesn't need to get it, to get healed, that's your role in a raid. But in terms of items with actual competition, what are the ones you should go for? What should you prioritize? Like if I was saying top five items, well, I would say the first on the priority list is the Light Phantom Scepter. You get 60 extra healing compared to Light Justice, and you get MP5 versus Spirit. This should probably be a priority to a degree for Holy Paladins and Resto Shamans, though how guilds will handle their Holy Priest and Resto Druid, that's a discussion that needs to be had in each individual guild. I'm not sure I would give every single Vash weapon to every single Resto Shaman and Holy Paladin before I decide to give one to a Resto Druid and Priest. Just a consideration, but that's a loot console, a bigger loot console decision that needs to be had. But either way, the top priority for you in tier five is Light Phantom Scepter. So 60 healing mp5 yeah it's a pretty big deal the second item on that list is the helmet it's a lot of healing spell crit mp5 it's a really really good helmet you will not easily replace this you'll replace it in tier 6 of course but even with when considering tier the tier 6 helmet, this helmet is still really damn powerful so yeah you should absolutely get it so that's the second item uh the third uh the third most important item well, I would say the gloves are pretty important, but you're not going to have competition with those, so I'm not counting those. Uh, the third uh, most important item, I would probably call the Sunhawk leggings. Pretty big deal due to the MP5 compared to the Heart of Flame leggings, but you're going to have a lot of competition with Shamans. Then you have the Girdle of the Fallen Stars, also a pretty big deal because of the gem sockets compared to what other options you had uh, before. Uh, and um, and then finally, well, finally, not quite as important, I would say, but honestly, you could either choose to go with the ring, the Phoenix Wing of uh, Phoenix Ring of Rebirth. It's a pretty solid upgrade, or you can go with the chest, or you can go with uh, the shoulders. Honestly, there isn't that. There, all of these are upgrades. All the other items are upgrades, but they're not quite as significant. I'd probably go with the ring if I had the personal choice uh, in the matter, like the Phoenix Ring of Rebirth compared to some other choices is a really damn good solid upgrade compared to other uh, options available. So I would probably prioritize that over anything else as my final choice. And with all of this gear, you have 2.2k uh, healing in tier five. That's all I had to say on the subject. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more. And hey, if you want to leave a comment, please do so in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions on the Paladin in general, please hop on my Discord. I'm more than happy to answer any questions people have.